Hey everybody! So we do a 1510. What am I rated? 1515 in rapid. I mean, my blitz and my rapid are kind of getting a bit close now. But I think my blitz is like 1350. So, okay, so we've got an Italian. It says bishop's opening here. Why does it say bishop's opening? This is the Italian opening. So, of course, we're going Russo. And try and remember some theory. I have a can of spring water. A bit, par bit parched because I've just um, sawn up a tree outside. Okay, we have d3, so we're going to Lucchini. And the old question is castles. Castles is the most common move here. Okay, we've got this exchange. Now, this gets spicy I believe okay all right let's stop and think very much inclined to play f4 that's my first thought f4 breaks the bishop's defense of the knight okay um, but the other issue is that queen h5 is incoming and I have no knight to move to f6 to prevent. So I do have g6. g6 stops the queen coming in, hangs the pawn, right? If I do this, the queen can come in anyway with check. Then g6. Queen takes here. Knight in. This is a line that I haven't really studied very much. Here, I think stopping the queen co coming in is is uh, is what's cri critical here. So now she can't go to h5, can't go to g4. The knight is welcome to the pawn. That's not that's not what it, this is all about. But I have queen h4, which is a dual threat of right now. It's not on anyway. They've taken here. Maybe it's just d6. Just preparing, get, getting ready to get my other bishop out. If he takes, takes, still the queen can't come to h5. Neither can she come to g4. So it'll be covered by my pawn or my bishop. <clears throat> I definitely have this in my study. And I'm just threatening to take here. I think it's it's almost certain that he's just going to capture. I may kick the knight away. Because if I can get my queen here, but the knight would come back to f3, so that prevents queen h4. This is what I want to do. Hello, Jensen. So he's played his first moves, I mean, 15 seconds. Two of his moves are only 15 seconds. So it's almost like he was prepared. Which is really odd for somebody in the 1500s. Ooh, hello. To, have known, to know what to do against a relatively rare opening. So surely I'll just take the pawn back now. Knight can take here. But, I mean, I could have taken with a pawn as well. That might have been actually a better idea. Taken with a pawn. <laughs> but, I mean, okay, on the plus side, this gets my bishop out into the board. I can then get my, my queen out. So I'm thinking queen e7, or is it queen h4? One of these guys, both of them look at the knight. Queen h4. Knight can't come there and can't come there. My queen goes here. Same problem. Knight can't go there and can't go there because the queen's on the same diagonal. Just diagonal. 
diagonal, just two different ends of the same diagonal. So I'm, I'm inclined to think this knight might be trapped right now. This pawn is pinned and can't move. There is no check from the queen. I don't think it really matters which of these squares I go to. So I'm going to go to the more forceful one. And I'm going to try and bag me a knight. Oh, what am I talking about? The knight can go there, it's defended by the bishop. The bishop can also go there, but that would drop the knight. That was a half-baked idea, wasn't it? Okay, so he's a pawn up, but... On the other hand, he is somewhat behind in development. The knight's not really threatening anything here. A knight could come in. I think castles, though. I, I don't. Castles. Rook h8 threatens mate. Bit of poetry, bit of bonus poetry there for you. Rook h8 threatens mate. Ooh, ooh. That would be very tempting. But it fails. Hmm. Okay. So I can play rook h8 anyway. And try and tempt him into the fork. But then after g3. Hmm. <sighs> again. Half. Oh, no, no, g3 don't work. The g3 would also fail. <laughs> Okay, now, my queen's not threatened, but I do need to prevent this, I think. And my knight can't defend because of these. So I think it's going to have to be rookie rook. There's a part of me that also wants to toy with the idea of this, but takes I can't even take the pawn because knight defends, so rook df8. Now all of my pieces are involved. In the campaign. He's looking at my good bishop. He's not really threatening that. I could take him out. I like this dark squared bishop. I like the fact that we've got the f-pawn pinned. This bishop may have less going for him, but if I take there, he's just going to replace it with another knight. But then I can just drop back to b6. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, it opens up the f file a bit as well. This, this pawn must defend the knight. Drop the bishop back. This doesn't work. Got that though. That would be uh, that'd be making things very sharp. If I take here. He's only got king takes, and then that. He's taken with a pawn. Okay. And then is he still got fantasies of this? Yeah, because I think that bishop sack on here was um, looking quite promising. Okay, now he's still got this. I could play rook f6, maybe even double up. Uh, I could put my knight here. That prevents that, but it can kick the knight away easily with c3. So I think I'm just going to drop the bishop back. Because the knight moving here actually makes the knight a lot tamer. I could even just play rook f6. And then where does he go from this square? Right, he can't go there or there or there. He'd have, have to go back to where he came from. Or there. These are out. Yes, if he comes here, rook f6, he's, he's got to go back to one of these two squares. And he ain't going to g7, I don't think. 
So that, this would just kind of allow me maybe to improve my rook slightly, don't know. I think what to do with this knight. I mean, d5, d4 looks looks natural, but then where to from there? Uh, other routes. This maybe. That's a very nice square. And if he wants to trade off his bishop, yeah, fine. I'm thinking my knight might come here. Here, of course, it's contesting this knight, and it's an undefended square. Could even think about like rook h5, threaten to trade my rook for two minors, which is good for me. Queen d2. Knight here threatens this pawn, but then just c3. I could come back to there, but again. Uh, that prevents the rook h5 idea, doesn't it? I can harass the queen slightly, and then c3. And c3 just prevents my knight from making any forward progress at all. I'm going to bring my knight back. Because it's now contesting this knight, okay? And this arrangement. Four diagonals, right? Like like when you bring your knights out <clears throat> at the start of the game. They're contesting the same squares, and again they are four diagonals apart. Okay, looks as though he's trying to improve his queen. Do I just wanna if I go here it's defended by the rooks, isn't it? What are you trying? You're trying to trade off queens. Here I've got this. Don't like that very much. I am a pawn down, but strictly speaking, it's kind of the H pawn, right? And that doesn't harm my prospects too much. Here now. I'm kind of liking that idea. I'm kind of liking knight f7. Um, knight f7 really puts the question to him. If he comes here, though, he's taking my rook. Okay, I'm going to play this move then. Yep. Can't come there or there, because knight takes. That's just poor. Very easy to get out of. Oh. That's your idea, is it? I never even crossed my mind. However, there's one problem with it. Okay. Which is that this pawn is pinned. It's almost an excellent idea. And I almost pooed my pants. I'm now threatening this knight twice as well with a rook. And the queen. Okay. This. The knight has to take. I take. That's forced. There, knight takes, queen takes, queen's on there, king's on here. Um, I have three pieces, two pieces looking at that. So I just take the knight. Take the knight, I'm thinking bringing this rook in is probably the way to go. Bishop takes, queen takes, rook h8. Oops. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, you're joking me. Oh, you muppet. You muppet. Oh. 
Hunty. Oh, that's that's the way it's been going recently. Let's do another one. That's the way it's been going. Just generally quite tight play, and then a complete lack of just brain fart, you know. Okay, so we've got Vienna Gambit declined. This is normal. I'm expecting the fashionable Queen F3, the Paulson attack. Now, I need to explore this C5 thing. Craig played that against me in a training game with Chess Bootcamp Live, and it was very effective. Um, but this is the only line that I've really studied. And after Knight takes, we go here, threatening C2 fork. Right. The, another move is this, in which case I played, I think, bishop e6. Obvious threat of knight e5, with tempo on the queen, two centralised knights, which control opposite colours, control a lot of squares between them. So this is very, very uh, tempting for white. But this is a really fun line. You come in with a knight here. And then the idea is that after the queen moves to defend this square, so the queen's going to come to one of these two squares, not this one, because our knight would take it, right? Um, then you play pawn takes knight, and the queen defends our knight. And it all gets very funny. Indeed. Opponent is dummy 4 on 12 from the United Kingdom, rated 15 17. Okay. Yeah, I might need to study. Oh, he's disconnected. What's going on? I've got all my dogs. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got all my dogs here. And Dammy has uh, done one, by the look of it. That's not very good. <sighs> Would be good to analyse that previous game, but I, I feel like I was I was winning. Let's just pull up my profile while we're waiting. It's got a minute there. Oh, okay. So that's. But then last night I I was playing on my phone. Played some very good blitz games. Oh, okay. I can't analyse while playing. Okay. Well, it's a different game though, dude. Analyzing your previous game while you're playing another game? What's wrong with that? <sighs> the endless fascination of trying to figure out your own your own performance. But one of the things that, that, um, that I've been really happy about with these, these five minute blitz games is even when I find myself in a tight spot, I've made it very, very hard for my opponent to win. Um, I've counter-attacked with Venom as well. And Dami is gone. Well, that's a shame. Okay. Okay, one more then. See if we can't get us a win. We have the white pieces against the 1500. Zarco del Valle, 38, from Spain. Are you going to show up to play? Yay! Right, we're going to play a G3 Vienna. My opponent is chatting. Como estas? Okay, and this is all very, very normal. One, one of the things that I like about this, right, if you want to be like an E4 player and you want something that's Okay. My opponent says, Sabes Espanol? I said no mucho. I don't know if that's even correct. Ah. <sighs> 
Yo vivo in Barcelona y tú. I live in Barcelona and you. Um, okay. The point is here. This. There's a couple of things that we could be doing here. H3 is, is an idea. Going after the bishop is an idea. H3 might be the more correct first, but it's very common. So as soon as they push d6, you see this bishop has no escape route. And, and we're going to eliminate this bishop. We now push h3, which prevents the knight and the bishop from coming here. Uh, Sheffield, Inglaterra, isn't it? Yeah. So what I started saying is that the you, you get to, a bit like the London, you get to play very often the same moves for 9, 10, 11 moves in this which I like. And part of the reason for that is because a lot of Black's responses are very natural looking. Encantado. I guess that means like, um, delighted or, or whatever, isn't it? Enchanté. Enchanté en français. Oh, hey, hey, ma. Two things here, but then b3. So you've got to be a bit careful there. Now, okay. So it's kind of like we've finished the first phase. Uh, okay, my opponent is being somewhat challenging. If I take, he's probably going to take the bishop. And that's going to be contesting this bishop. I don't think I want to do that. I think I would probably rather allow him to take, but let's think about this. Maybe f3. So if he takes, I take back towards the center with the f-pawn, and that is kind of the, the idea. The, the main break in all of this is f4, like in the Vienna Gambit, but much later. f4, sometimes even f5 to <clears throat> close off the light square bishop, or f4, f takes e5, with pressure on the knight. So with this, okay, with this we're opening up a dark squared diagonal, but that doesn't hurt because there's no dark squared bishop because he's already blown off the board and and he's pushed on. Okay, so now if I want to, I can just, I think I, I think I will. I'm just gonna, like now I have a dark squared bishop. Ho ho ho. It's not strictly the quote, but oh. Pawns, pawns, pawns. Now, like, I've got king h2, but you have to say, well, what's the point of king h2? He's got one piece looking at this and it's defended, okay? So f4 now is a point. You see, the point of f3 was, point of f3 is that he's contesting this. So I push f3, he's now pushed on. So the threat against e4 has just gone completely, right? I've closed this. So now it's gonna be f4, right? F4. I'm hitting this undefended pawn. Now he could choose to defend it with a knight. He could choose to defend it with a queen. But then I can also choose to push on. Now if he takes, I've got knight takes, I've got bishop takes. This is the beauty. But I think I am hovering around 50% 50, 50 with this opening so far. Okay, there he goes. He's defended with a knight. now. Shall I? This is a big question now, critical question. If I take here, he improves his knight, puts his knight in the center of the board, and he's more comfortable. I think, I'm thinking f5, because it really upsets this bishop. And it also opens up my bishop, which could come out to pin the knight. Okay, this bishop tends to be a bit more sleepy in this, in this opening, in my experience. Okay, so the bishops move back, obviously. Not gone onto the back rank where he interrupts the rooks, communication with each other. I could do this and it might prompt h6. 
That's cool by me, right? Um, if h6, I might retire. I might then form a battery with the queen. I might then come after h6. Very, very common idea. There we go. So now queen c1, I could take, take, queen takes, right? Maybe something like knight comes in here and it's like looking ropey. In fact, g4 ain't a bad idea because g4 allows knight g3, knight h5. The only purpose to that move surely is defending that pawn. Okay, I'm going to push on with this, with this idea g4, knight g3, maybe even king, king h2. Because then you've got ideas like rook g1, you can, you can push through with your pawns, right? Leave, leave the king in this square here. He's fine there, right? Well protected by this wall of pawns in the middle. Opponent might have ideas of this. It's like, go ahead. I'll just re restore my pawn wall. I, I might play b3. Okay, spinning his knight away. Now, first thing is there an, is there a threat from that move? Not immediately. The next question is well, what does it give me? Well, what does it give me? Well, it might give me this. I'm going to play knight g3 anyway. Um, Queen c one's definitely an idea at the right time. I just need to think about the timing and, you know, how does black have the time to stop my ideas? So do I want to get my knight in here first, then queen here? But let's, let's say we've had both of these, right? I have takes, takes, queen takes. Knight is on h5. I'm threatening queen g7 mate. That's the point. So this again, I might even stimulate a knee-jerk reaction like this. But I'm, I might just stick my queen here first. Queen there, then knight there. This is a less threatening move and a less kind of telegraphy move. <laughs> so I'm just hearing from the kitchen, my wife just went, Woo! Ghost! Fuck me! <laughs> That's our cat. I don't know what Ghost has done. She probably brought something in dead. Somebody was trying to bring in a squirrel earlier on through the cat flap. And Sally uh, decided to shut the cat flap because she's saying, No squirrels in here today. Thank you very much. This was a bit of a... I mean, actually, I also have King H2 here to be fair. And off she goes. She goes away again. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to play with you now. I'm going to do this. I think if, if you try that queen trick again, they're just king h2, queen c1, knight's coming here. And look at this again. We've got this like central pawn structure that's pointing this away. Okay, that means whichever way it's pointing, that's generally the direction in which you want to attack. And who's got their queen or king over that side of the board? Fella, me lad, right? It's easier for black to, to attack this way because that's the way the pawns are pointing from black's perspective, right? So you've got opposite, opposite directions. Um, I'm playing queen c1 because he's trying some kind of counterplay on this side, but I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Right. <clears throat> now I am going to... And I'm going to play, play my knight there anyway. And it's defended. Interestingly though, the queen defends h6. Ha. Huh. I see your plan. Okay, I can defend that with the bishop. 
my toy with this idea again. This, this, hits the queen. Where's the queen going? Now that the knight, you see the knight has just didn't put a stopper in the queen's escape. I've, my pawns control the light squares. Currently my bishop controls this. Um, bishop e1, knight h5, queen goes back here. I could just trade off the queens. Open up the h file. It's a thought. This does not bother me. This queen goes there. I've got that with check. Queen could take. This queen's under attack. Queen goes there. I trade queens. Then I take the knight. Pawn here. So he's going to end up with pawns like that. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Alrighty. Come on, what have we got here? The more you play these same openings, the more of a library of attacking and defensive ideas you, you can build up. I'm, I'm really, I can't bring myself to be as scared of these pawns. That would be an idea, but knight protects. I'm just going to play a waiting move. I'm going to play a3. Stopping the knight from coming in here. I'd love to open up the g file and maybe have a rook on it. That's my feeling. And if I, I didn't even consider what's going to happen if I do this. I think the queen's just going to re retreat. And actually, she can't go to f6 because of my knight, right? So if here, Queen's probably going to bugger all the way off there. Could I have ideas of... All right, my knight's on here. Let's say the queen goes back to d7. I feel like I want this rook here. I've got more rooks as well that could... There, queen goes back there. Maybe I prove my bishop to here. His ideas of taking out that pawn. Maybe rook g1. Feels like there's quite a bit of building work to do, you know. But in these middle games, that's often what you have to do. You don't win. You don't launch a decisive attack with two pieces. It could sometimes be. But it should be really be minimum three, very often four or five, and that what? What the hey? Okay, this queen. I'm pulling the trigger on this. Right, queen is now under attack. If she goes here, yeah, I don't know. Cross that bridge because she can. Re he can. Black can recapture with the knight. I might do this again. It's a bit of a mind game. I just block with a bishop. Queen here, bishop here, queen goes back. I could even take out the pawn. Sack the bishop. But again, I don't feel like I've got... Okay, right, right, good, good, good. Good, I'm quite happy to see that. Okay. Uh, rook g1 is a non-mistake move, I think. But let's see if we can do any better. G3. This knight's doing a reasonable job here, defense-wise. I, I don't I'm not worried about this, because I push on. I'm not really worried about this because I take back. Could even sack the knight. Okay, what do you want it is?
Hmm. Okay, let's try and counterplay there. I can just let him take. I'll take back. I've still got two defenders on there, Queen and Rook. Also undefends his pawn. Shall I? Go on then. B3 looks tidy. You take here, I'm just taking back. Might even have ideas of this at some point. And this, this knight needs to hold its ground. So we, we, we have had some activity there on the queen's side. I wasn't feeling any pressure. I didn't look very deeply into it. But I'm still kind of in five minute blitz mode, thinking how can I bust through my opponent's position. Ho, ho, ho. Right, this stops any ideas of this. And my bishop is coming straight back to d2. With ideas of sack, sack. So sack takes, takes. Got two attackers on here. He's also got two defenders. Same knight and queen. Right? Takes, takes, queen takes. And I'm just threatening queen g7 mate. So you're going to probably do this. I don't understand. I just take them, I. Eh? I just take and there's no dark square bishops, and I've got a nice solid. I mean, yeah, there, there's maybe a discovered attack by the queen, but okay. I'm just going to drop my bishop back here. And the reason is because a bishop and a knight in this configuration, the bishop covers all of the knight's forward squares. And I feel like that knight was in quite an important position. Okay, he's got three attackers on here now, but don't I have this? <sighs> this, what are you going to do? Adds another defender to this, but it kind of puts a damper on this sack idea. But I am two pawns up. Okay. And again, I'm not afraid of this knight because it's covered by this bishop. That's also it's a third defender onto h3, which I kind of like. So I'm starting to get the feeling like black is... Losing patience. He's eight and a half minutes. I'm on twelve and a half. Okay. I really want my queen to get in to the action now. Also, this light squared bishop's doing nothing. But because I've got this big light squared pawn structure, well, it's not doing nothing. It's keeping this knight. Out of uh, mischief. So do I come back here and resurrect this idea? Takes, 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 queen on here. Yes. Never be afraid to repeat moves. And, and, unless there's a danger of draw by repetition. You know, same position three times kind of thing. Um, if it's the right thing to do. Ooh! Ah, okay. I get it. Rook G3. So I really don't mind trading this, this bishop for one of those knights. He comes in here, right? Knight, if I take, knight there, he's forking king, bishop, and rook. So I want to... 
get another defender on there, and I think it's rook g3. Yes, indeed. And then I'm going to push h4, probably, and put the question to this knight. And then I might even push g5 and just bust through. I like the fact that I've got a rook in line with my opponent's king. Hmm. If I take, rook takes, he puts a rook in here, so what? Or do I just take out this knight? He's threatening to take out the bishop. Then if my queen recaptures, she's not in line of a, of a knight fork. He's he's having a he's having a go, isn't he? I take rook recaptures. I eliminate this knight. I'm still two pawns up. For goodness sake, come on! In a situation like that, also notice the rook is defending d3 as well, which is quite nice. Okay, I'm taking out the knight. We are simplifying now. I know it's my good bishop, but that knight was going nowhere. Really, you know, defended by these pawns. Okay, okay, okay. That's defended twice. He has got pressure on this pawn, so it's kind of tying down my queen. Queen takes there is, would be my dream, right? This is also undefended. So I'm feeling like maybe what I want to do is queen b2, queen b6. Safe from the knight. And where are these extra pawns? It's really these two, actually. Okay, come on. Who could be doing a better job? This knight is somewhat out of the picture right now. I feel like this rook could... I mean, it's defending this pawn, but the pawn's not attacked. Does this rook want to come all the way back round? Also gives this knight other options. But actually, the knight is doing a job, because it's this is threat hanging over black of that, so... Is it queen b6? But then I could get into real trouble here. Now I feel like I might even need to double up my rooks there. I don't really want to do that. I can't do that. Rook takes. He is scrapping. Cock. Okay, but, right, this isn't the end of the world. He's got three attackers on this pawn, so I'm probably going to lose that pawn, but if the queen's involved, I'm going to take with the king. Takes, takes. I don't have to give up my rook. I'm now equivalent of a pawn down. I'm actually, I'm a pawn up, but an exchange down. My queen's eyeing up two pawns, both of which are currently defended by his queen. So I think what I'm going to do is just defend here. If I get this, then I'm threatening mate. You know, if, if he does something really silly with his queen. But that, again, was just momentary lapse of reason, you know. This... This is a check threat. And that's why we're 1500s. And his rook's now really, really active, really well poised. Rook a1 now doesn't work for him because he loses material. I 
But the queen, his queen also is somewhat tied up. Being the only defender of these two pawns. And a also a critical defender of that pawn. Cannot move my king onto the second rank, okay. Okay, if I go here, he's got this. Do I have a check? I don't have to take the rook. Especially since I've got check. It's not much of a check, to be honest. Maybe rook c1. Okay, stepped out of that. This, that. Do I come back here? There again doesn't work because I've got two eyes on a1. I'd love to get my knight, I'd like spin my knight around so I attack this pawn with my knight, which means getting it to here. But that is four moves away. <sighs> no, I think he's uh, I think he's got the edge now. And it did happen down this this side of the book. Well, no, I mean I blundered my rook, but here he's going to take. Here he's going to trade queens. Oh, that just blunders my queen. This is going to do this. I have to come here. He's going to force rooks off the board. It's, it's not lost. Everything's not lost. That's a check. Wow. Really infiltrated now, hasn't he? With these, okay. That's resignable. Yeah, mate in three. Okay, quick look at the review though. Did I have an edge? What did I do wrong? What do I need to do better? No! He played out of his skin, the boy. 1750, and I played like I should be. No blunders. Two misses though. This was one, just snatching off to that. Queen b2 and I have an edge, but... <sighs> what should he have played? Takes. No. Uh, that was just a really solid game. It's just a really solid game. I, I didn't blunder at all. Didn't blunder at all. And we were, you know, we were just arm wrestling until this point. I shouldn't have taken the bishop. Ah, oh, because, yeah, because I lost control of this square. Best move here was hit one of the knights. Then if he comes in, I can take him out. Yeah, slight edge, but you know, that's what you get, guys. Very, very gritty game. And another loss. Let's have a quick look on the chess.com explorer. See how I'm doing in this opening so far. My game's is white. This is all time. Let's say, you know, this. The two knights, knight, see, bishop c5. I've only got like a 1 in 3 win rate here. So I need to go back and look at that for sure. 
Bishop c5. I'm playing bishop g2, which is correct. So this is we're going to have this position loads. I could play immediate d3 here. Okay, well, I, I need to go back and go back and look at that. But uh, yeah, three interesting games. One, you know, two two losses. One because of a silly blunder, and one because my opponent just ground it out. Fair play to him. And uh, one win that I didn't deserve because my opponent uh, abandoned. But there you go. I've enjoyed myself. Hope you've, hope you've enjoyed watching my uh, struggles and trials and tribulations. I'll see you tomorrow.